in Acts chapter 18 and 19 that we will go into today. So as you're going there, let me start with a story that I heard. There was a, a farmer in Africa, and he was toiling hard, and he was working on his uh, farm. And uh, he was doing that year after year. He was putting uh, his seeds down, cultivating it, getting the harvest. And uh, then he heard about diamonds being uh, found in Africa. So as you know, some of the uh, best diamonds are found in Africa. And so he decided to sell his land and go buy another piece of land looking for diamonds. And so for decades, he was looking for diamonds in this new land that he thought had diamonds, and he didn't find any. Meanwhile, the guy who bought the farmland, he uh, was working hard and toiling the land, and he came across a rock. He thought it was nothing big. He put it up on his mantle, and a man came by and said, what, where did you find this? Do you know how valuable this is? Uh, and he said, no, I have so many of them in my uh, ground, uh, in my farm. I, didn't, I thought it was just uh, looked cool, and I didn't know what it was. And the man said, this is a piece of diamond. It's worth so much money. But this farmer, even the new farmer, did not realize it. And he had so much of it. But the old farmer who sold his property, going searching for diamonds, he uh, didn't realize it was under his nose, under his feet, the whole time, he did not dig uh, to find it. Instead, he took the easy way and thought he could uh, make it through other easy means. Uh, we'll come back to the story, but let's turn to Acts chapter 18, verse 24 to 26. Just uh, to give it some more context here, we're done with the second missionary journey of Paul. This is about 20 years after Pentecost, and uh, this particular portion brings us uh, into the third missionary journey of Paul, and first it introduces us to a man named Apollos, uh, Apollos. So if you would go to Acts chapter 18, verse 24, now a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, which is in Egypt, came to Ephesus. He was an eloquent man, competent in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in spirit, and he spoke and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew, not, knew only about the baptism of John. So uh, he began to speak boldly in the synagogues, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of the Lord more accurately. So here we see a man named Apollos who was, uh, uh, it says, a great man. He was a vibrant man. He was a man that was eloquent, eloquent it says, in his speech, and he knew a lot of things uh, uh, from the Bible. But there was uh, one thing he did not know. He did not know about the baptism of Jesus. And uh, at that time, the written word did not exist, so he had heard about the baptism of John and uh, he was a believer in Christ, but he had not uh, learned about the baptism uh, of G uh, ba baptism that was in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So uh, one of the first instances here uh, that I'd like to uh, speak about is there is more truth to be learned and more clarity that we can get. Uh, just like Apollos, who was a great speaker, had to learn that he had some more things to learn. I pray that all of us in our different walks of spiritual journey, whether we feel like we've read the Bible a hundred times or whether we feel like we uh, are not reading the Bible like we ought to, that we have that thirst and desire to get into the Word and learn more from, from the Lord, to learn more truths and get clarity on the things that we don't yet know and be willing and teachable to learn from others. I think uh, uh, Joe and Justin talked about it the last few times as well. Here we see Apollos, a great preacher, was willing to learn from Priscilla and Aquila. And he uh, uh, learned about the difference between the baptism of John and the baptism of Christ. Uh, legalistic versus grace. Uh, it is not about uh, not doing some things 
uh, to overcome sin. It is the grace and the mercy of the Lord that we can live each day. It is only the imputed righteousness of Christ that we can go before a holy God, a sovereign God, and uh, live out our life. So one of the ways that we can thrive is by continuing, no matter what age you are in the Lord, no matter how uh, you think you know everything, uh, that you continue to dig for the truth, that you get clarity on who we belong to daily by studying the Word of God. Enter into a love relationship with the Lord rather than uh, being legalistic and following some rules and regulations. Then we go on to Acts chapter 18, verse 27 to 28. Verse 27 to 28. And when he wished to go to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who uh, through grace had believed. Uh, he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that Christ was Jesus. So we can see that Apollos uh, had been willing to be teachable. He was willing to be uh, obedient to uh, the teaching of others. And because of that, he was able to understand the truth. And now that truth is being used to make an impact upon others and others in the community. Um, he wanted to be a missionary or go to Achaia, which is Corinth. So from Ephesus, where he is, is currently, he's going to go to Corinth. And remember, remember, that is where Achilla and Priscilla came from. And so when he expressed an interest that he wanted to go to that place, speaking about the Lord Jesus, uh, because of his obedience, they were willing to uh, uh, send him with a letter. And he was able to be somebody that was useful for many. We can see that the way to win others to Christ is through personal discipleship and commissioning. And we see that uh, Apollos here is becoming a reservoir or a channel for many. So is the life of Achilla and Priscilla. They saw the mistakes in Apollos' life. Uh, or even though he was a great speaker, there were some things that he was not quite getting. And they pulled him aside uh, and they taught him, and now he is being used mightily. And that last verse said that he was refuting the Jews and uh, uh, about the Christ as the Messiah. And he was showing the scriptures of the Lord. And he became a great and useful weapon uh, for the Lord in Corinth or Achaia. So now we go to chapter 19. Chapter 19, we see uh, Paul starting out. And going through the inner lands and coming to Ephesus, um, we see that it happened that while Apollos was in Corinth, so Apollos had already moved on from Ephesus and gone down to Corinth to start his ministry, Paul passed through the inland lands and came to Ephesus, and this is in his third missionary journey now. And he found some disciples, and he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no, we have not even heard that there was a Holy Spirit. And when they said that, Paul was surprised. And he said, into what were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. Because normally, uh, when you get baptized, you would get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they said, we've never heard of the word Holy Spirit. And remember, Apollos uh, was the one that was baptizing uh, these people in Ephesus. So it was very possible that they had been baptized in the name of John, as they were saying, and they had not heard about the Holy Spirit. Remember, the written word uh, was not, was, uh, the Bible as in its current form was not there for them. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling people to believe in the one who would come after him, that is Jesus. And uh, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. Now we see 12 disciples, uh, the 12 disciples in Ephesus who were willing uh, to obey as well. And because of that, we start to see in the next few verses an outflow experience of the Spirit. They were willing to uh, uh, be listening to what Paul was saying. And it says that immediately they were willing to be baptized in the name of Jesus 
And then Paul laid hands on them, and the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they began to speak in tongues and prophesying. This is where uh, we need to understand that Ephesus, we've taught in the past about Corinth being a carnal place, but Ephesus was even worse. It was sin city, like Las Vegas, uh, if you want to think of it in today's terms. There was so much evil practices and evil worship and sexual sins going on there in the temple of Artemis or Diana. And in order to survive in the midst of this depravity, Paul noticed when he got there that these disciples did not have the Holy Spirit. And he said, uh, have you guys received the Holy Spirit after you've been saved? And, and they said they did not know anything about that. And then they were uh, willing uh, and uh, were uh, able to receive the Holy Spirit uh, with the evidence of uh, uh, speaking in tongues and uh, having the gifts of the Holy Spirit here. So uh, in order to thrive similarly in the depravity that we are facing in today's society, just like in Ephesus, we need more of an outpouring of the experience of the Holy Spirit. We were learning in Sunday school that it is by the blood of Jesus, the finished work of Jesus, uh, and only by, uh, by grace and uh, faith in him and his grace that we are saved. But after we are saved, we are to work out our salvation. And in order to do that, we need more uh, truth from the word of God we need more community and helping each other up. And we need more of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And as, uh, as we are living in today's society, in the midst of this depravity, do we have uh, that, man, that, that Holy Spirit to help us to thrive and not just to survive? As we learned also in our uh, adult English Sunday school, that we are to have an active process in that. We cannot be passive and just life come at us and uh, face things as they come up. But we need to have an active process of studying the word, being in community as the opportunities are there uh, uh, for Fridays and other opportunities in Sunday school and different places for you to be in community with others, sharing your burdens as all the things that are going on in our community and you hear about all of the uh, mental illness and all of those things that are going on. I think it's even more important in the midst of this pandemic that we uh, as a community gather and we pour into each other. But more than that, there is an overflow of the Holy Spirit that is also needed. You know, a submarine, there is, uh, when you go under, the further you go underground, there's increased pressure. And the reason that it does not uh, crumble under that pressure is because the pressure within it is greater than the pressure outside. Just, as, just like that, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes, you are given an indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That is what leads you to salvation. But an outpouring of the Holy Spirit is what we need to live in this land of depravity like Ephesus. And that was what Paul was pointing out. So we need more of the Holy Spirit and uh, uh, craving that these days. You know, our Lord Jesus said, uh, if you ask, uh, just as a father would give his son's good gifts, children, if you ask, the Lord is able to. And this is not just uh, an exception, but Paul is saying this is an expectation. If you want to live a victorious Christian life, this is an expectation that you need the Holy Spirit uh, baptism, that you need the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in order to live in a victorious Christian way. And uh, you will also have the evidence of the Holy Spirit, whether it be uh, speaking in tongues or other gifts of the Holy Spirit uh, that will help us to thrive and not just to survive. Then we go on to Acts chapter 19, verse 8 and 10. Here we see Paul, after this whole thing happened, that the, the 12 disciples are baptized and they're filled with the Holy Spirit. He uses his opportunity to teach in the synagogues. And after three months of teaching and reasoning and persuading about the kingdom of God, we see that the Jews were upset and uh, they uh, decided to part ways. We see that uh, Paul decided to take his teachings to a rented place uh, 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 of, of a house and he starts to teach others. And he stays in Ephesus for another two more years. 
And the seven churches that we see in the book of Revelation, uh, where, where John, in his uh, vision, tells uh, about the seven churches, all uh, became churches because of the ministry of Paul uh, in the city surrounding Ephesus. So there is more opportunity to teach and evangelism left despite the opposition. Yes, the opposition was steep, but Paul did not succumb to that. He started renting a place and teaching the people during the uh, midday where work was stopped. And he spent two full years in Asia. And it says in the last verse there, all heard the gospel and the gospel spread uh, throughout Asia, both to the Jews and the Greek, it says in verse 10. So the seven churches came out of this ministry of Paul on his third missionary journey. Are we able to tell others about the gospel story despite opposition, ridicule that is ratcheting up these days? So uh, we know in uh, Romans chapter 5 uh, how uh, it says that we will go through many tribulations as Paul did here. And that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope and the uh, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So uh, what I want to urge the church today as the worship team is coming up is that uh, we have more to uh, we, have, we have more to receive from the Lord. We have more in terms of truths that we can learn. We need to get down into the word of God and not just read the word of God. But as Pastor said, uh, we need to find the God of the Word and have Him be our personal teacher. I heard a quote the other day that said that uh, once, once you study the Word of God and it, it fills our mind and it, fills, uh, it becomes the song of our heart and we will start to preach messages to our own heart and we will be able to encourage ourselves in the Word of God. The second thing is we need to make an impact and stand together as a community and build each other up as Aquila and Priscilla did for Apollos and Apollos did for the people in Ephesus. Uh, the third and the most important thing is that we need an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need to earnestly desire that. It should not be just for some people, but it should be an expectation that if you want to lead a victorious Christian life, that we need to desire the Holy Spirit. And then uh, when we are thriving in such manner, the Lord will open up opportunities of teaching and evangelism that will uh, uh, take place despite all kinds of oppression that will come our way. So as uh, I conclude with that initial story that I started with, that treasure was in that ground all along. And it was, uh, could not be found by that man and uh, the second man who found it did not even know what it was truly about. But we are blood-brought saints. We have been saved by the finished work on the cross. We have been purchased. And if you put your faith in Christ as a free gift, as grace, he's able to give this gift to you. But once you get this gift, we need to go deeper. We need to go uh, a little bit more into the word and into community and into the Holy Spirit so that we can uh, thrive and not just survive, especially as we live in this depraved generation. May God bless you all with these words.